Hi and welcome back to another Tech Minds video. So I recently received this antenna and although I'm not an avid airband listener, I thought I'd give it a try and compare it against the antenna that I normally use when receiving aircraft transmissions. Now this is the GA505 and its specification details that it supports a frequency range of between 76 MHz up to 108 MHz and then 118 MHz up to 137 MHz. Now this is the main connecting box where the two supplied elements are connected to along with your 50 ohm feeder. Essentially it's the center part of a dipole. The coax connection is made via a BNC socket presumably for quick release and for frequency support. On each end of the box we find the socket which is where the supplied antenna elements push into. Now there are two grub screws which fasten quite tightly to hold those elements in place. On the rear we have two mounting points which when using the supplied U clamps you can attach a mounting pole. A couple of hose clamps are also supplied although when I installed this for testing I didn't end up using them. You also get a couple of BNC adapters which work with various radios like the Malahite for example or those radios that have those weird 3.5mm antenna sockets. You also get 10 meters of coax which is terminated with a BNC plug on either end. Now the coax is rather thin so if you have better quality coax already then I would recommend using that to minimize loss but if you don't then this should get you started. Now the two 70 centimeter stainless steel elements come packaged inside this PVC tubing but this tubing can also be used for mounting the antenna which I'll show you shortly. The elements themselves are metal tubes they're not solid steel just in case anyone was wondering. Now attaching the elements is quite easy and there's an allen key provided to help you tighten those grub screws on either end. Just make sure you don't over tighten them. Now if you're wondering what's inside the box like I was, well this is the inside. Now this is a passive antenna so there will be no powered electronics within that black plastic box. So I can only assume there is some kind of matting transformer inside. Now I didn't want to open it because at this stage it might damage the box and it appears to be glued shut. Now mounting this antenna can be done in a couple of ways, either horizontally or vertically. The choice is up to you, but we will test both polarizations later in the video. Now for the first test, I mounted the antenna horizontal like this. And as you can see, I used the PVC pipe as part of the support. This also helps to get the antenna elements away from the metal mounting pole. Now just ignore that brown tape because at this point I couldn't find my other mounting bracket that's in the garage. So brown tape come to the rescue. And as we'll be testing it vertically later, using tape just made it easy to remove. Now any of the comparisons that I do will be against this antenna, which is a tri-band antenna designed for ham radio use. Its closest band is the two meter band on 145 megahertz. So that's why I've used it in the past for airband receiving. Now it will be interesting to see the difference between this and using an antenna designed specifically for the airband. Now anytime you see me switch to antenna A at the top left of the video means I'm receiving on the antenna above the roof. Antenna selection C, which most of this video will be on, will be using the GA505. Right, heading 260 degrees, descend level A, 0, Diana 1, 0, Romeo. Get down all to it, it's 4,000 feet, something, 6, can we make you do? Something volume 0, something 4, 7, 0, Diana 1, 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 and we we'll find out if vertical was better than this particular transmission while using horizontal polarization. 
as well as voice, there are packets of digital data also found on the airband around 131 MHz. These are ACARS transmissions coming from aircraft flying high up in the sky. Using a piece of software called Plane Plotter, we can decode these digital packets and view the ASCII information. Now, with the antenna still in the horizontal position, I tried the FM broadcast band. Now, unfortunately, though, I cannot play any of the audio due to copyright. But if you look closely at when I switch between antenna C, which is the GA505, and antenna A, which is the roof antenna, the signal levels are about the same. But the noise floor drops quite a bit, meaning for those FM DXs, this would make quite a great antenna. In fact, if you look at this transmission, the station is completely gone when using the antenna on the roof, but is clearly heard and seen when using the GA505. Now I've changed the orientation of the antenna so it looks more like a vertical dipole, still using the PVC tubing to keep it away from the metal mast. If we take a look at the weather transmission on the airband, we can see that the signal strength is a couple of dB stronger compared to when the antenna was mounted horizontal. Normal aircraft communications still come in clear and strong. Obviously, I cannot compare with horizontal as it's just not the same conditions, i.e. different aircraft, different location and obviously different altitude. A quick check of that station that we could only hear with the GA505 on FM broadcast band and it appears this signal is a lot weaker with the antenna mounted vertically rather than horizontal. So that's something to note if you are going to use this antenna for FM broadcast DXing. Now while I was scanning towards the top end of the airband, I noticed this signal. Now this is a transmission from a weather satellite that passes overhead. As this transmission is just within specs of the antenna, it wouldn't surprise me if you could also use this antenna for receiving and decoding faxes from weather satellites as they pass overhead. Now you will notice some little packets of data to the left of that satellite transmission. Now these are VDL transmissions and using a VDL2 decoder, we can decode the information contained in them. It's extremely like ACARS, but it's a different type of digital packet. Now while I was looking at these transmissions, I also come across a voice transmission, which I believe, but not 100% sure of, could be military comms. Now take a listen as they're talking about doing barrel rolls and I'm pretty sure commercial pilots are not going to be doing those. Rolling, it's getting better. The shoot, Roger. Let's go to a quite a high altitude first. Aim for speed, barrel roll to the left. Pulling, pulling, go. I'm out. Any comments from your side? So shall we do the, anything differently? I'm not too sure. I think I just need to sharpen up a bit myself. It wasn't far off, it's just that I was getting wider and wider. Time for speed, barrel roll to the left. Pulling, pulling, go. Anyway guys, that's a brief overview of the GA505. Now, let me know if you've got one of these down in the comments below. I'm not too sure how long they've been out for. I don't think they've been released that long and if actually there's any for sale anywhere. But if I find some for sale, I'll obviously link below so you can grab yourself one. Until the next video, take care and I'll see you in the next one.